It's no secret that the world of sport is different today than it was 100 years ago. Even in the last few years, we've seen significant changes to the sports that we know and love. Athletes are faster, stronger, fitter, recover faster. Lots has changed in the last few decades. Even Rafael Nadal says technology is changing sport as we know it. So maybe not everything that's happening and that's changing is good. In this video, I'll go through the four major areas that have seen change because of improvements and changes in technology. So let's get started. Now I wanna make this a really quick video, so we'll go through these sections rather quickly, but if you have additional questions about any of these parts of sport or want to talk about something else, please leave that in the comment section below. So the first section to talk about is probably one of the most obvious and that's safety. Now athlete safety, safety of the fans, lots has improved over the last few decades and a hundred years. Let's talk about football helmets. I think when you think about sports safety, the collisions and concussions in professional football, American football, is quite famous. They even have a movie about it. Let's talk about the changes in just football helmets over the last hundred years. If you took one of the helmets from 1925 and you decided to play against J.J. Watt, for example, you may see some problems and I'm mean, on, honestly I think we'd probably see deaths in football. There's a huge difference between the protection that players had back in 1925 compared to what they have today. So safety has improved significantly and technology has facilitated a lot of that improvement. Along with in-game and in-sport safety, you see a lot of improvements in recovery. There's a lot more active recovery that goes on and even from injuries, you can see athletes getting back to their former level of fitness much faster because of the new techniques available to them. There are even zero gravity treadmills that can help runners and others keep their fitness up after an injury that would cause some problems with any weight bearing exercise like running on a treadmill. So changes like that we see from technology and are helping the best athletes in the world recover faster and perform better in their sports. The second change we see is in skill and performance. This is one of the major changes that we've seen over the last hundred years and even in the last decade or so. Many changes have occurred in world records. We're seeing those fall every single year. Recently we saw a runner pass the two hour barrier in the marathon. So many things are changing and it seems like it's happening more and more rapidly over time. To give you just a few brief examples, the 100 meter sprint has seen 24% improvement over 108 years, pole vault has seen 86% improvement in 94 years, javelin 95% over 76 years, and moving over into the world of cycling, which is obviously one that I know a little bit better, the four kilometer individual pursuit has improved 35% in just 32 years, and the one hour cycling record has improved 221% over 111 years. Now, a lot of that improvement can be based on new ideas, new training regimens that have been implemented based on tried and true methods and better coaching, better accessibility to time and devotion to this training because professional athletes is more prevalent, they make more money, they're able to dedicate themselves just a little bit more. But in addition to that, better aerodynamics on the cycling runs is significant. And let's talk about that one hour record just for a little bit. Jens Voigt back in 2014 set the record, the one hour cycling record at 51.110 kilometers. And 2019, fast forward just five years, that's already improved by 7.8% to over 55 kilometers. That's huge, in just five years, the one hour cycling record has gone up almost 8%. So much technology change has occurred in that time frame that we're starting to see these athletes and their skills amplified by the technology that they're using. Now, as we see these records start to fall and world records being set every single year, the bar for athletic performance is continually rising. I think one of the aspects that is causing this is the fact that sport is becoming more globalized than before. We're able to pull athletes from multiple continents to compete against each other. The Olympic Games, I think, is an excellent way to show athletic performance across the world, and bringing more people into sport is a huge benefit to the human race in general and sports to see that improvement. Just seeing more people compete is helping us become better athletes but the technology that we use makes a big difference as well. 
Wearable technology specifically is letting us track so many new things like distance, heart rate, speed, jump height, fatigue, muscle activation, respiratory rhythms, neurological activity, even sleep patterns are being identified and tracked using this new technology. So the more we know, the more data we have, if it's used wisely by people who know what they're talking about, we can see significant improvements because people can do better at what they've been trained to do. They can see more detailed analysis of what they're currently doing and improve some of those things and make those micro adjustments that they may need to make to take their performance to the next level. Okay, so for number three, we're gonna move into something just a little bit more controversial. Now this is adjudication. So the referees using technology to improve their work. So we see instant replays, we see line judging technologies, finish line, goal line cameras, so much has gone into making the referee's job just a little bit easier, but obviously this comes with its own fair share of controversy. I love watching tennis, I love watching those tournaments. Uh, the majors are always very exciting throughout the year, but one of the things that has caused a lot of stir is the Hawkeye system, which is the line judge that they use for challenges. Now, this Hawkeye system measures whether the ball landed in or out. If a player challenges, they're able to go back to the tapes and decide whether the ball was actually in or out. Now, the controversy comes in because this system is not perfectly accurate, even though when it measures, it measures to within millimeters of that line. It's not perfect. It carries a margin of error. Just like anything, you need to realize that it's not a perfect measurement. Now, the margin of error on this system specifically is about 3.6 millimeters. Obviously, that's, that's very, very small and very accurate, but it's not perfect. After you've seen some of these competitions where the ball can be called in because of a millimeter touching the line, you start to realize that maybe it was out, but the system, because of that margin of error, is incorrect. So maybe we shouldn't rely on these technological advances quite as much as we do, but I think that's a conversation for another video. In this specific case, the argument in opposition to using technology for adjudication and referees has two main arguments. The one being it interrupts the play. So it interrupts the game itself. People are chopping up the flow to look at instant replays and to look at all these things where they really just wanna play the game. The second reason is because it takes the referees, the human referees out of the game and digital refereeing is becoming more popular. Now, while this may be exciting for people watching on TV, you need to have that human effect of sport and it's, it's a lot of what we do as athletes. One of the things that has happened in the adoption of a lot of this digital aspect of the referee's job is the concept of a challenge. So not necessarily going back to every single play or every single shot and reviewing it, but giving the players and coaches an opportunity to challenge something that has occurred in the past and therefore drawing on the instant replay and being able to limit those challenges helps to keep the game flow as smooth as possible. Okay, to wrap this up, one of the most common elements that we see and that technology has helped us to see is engagement with the sport, engagement with the athletes themselves and seeing them compete on a world stage. Now, anyone in the world practically can watch the FIFA World Cup when it airs. Anyone can watch the Olympics. We can stream live NBA games to our phones now. But just a few decades ago, that was completely impossible. So. Huge improvements have been made in letting people watch the sports that they love and being able to follow along in real time, keeping up with social media, seeing what's going on with your teams and your sports even in the off season has been an exciting way to follow along with the sports that are so popular today. Along with televised live sports and streaming, you can even interact these days with the specific players that you wanna watch. Now, I personally really enjoy watching golf. One of my favorite golfers of all time is definitely Rory McIlroy. So let's go ahead and try this out for ourselves. We'll start a new tweet and we'll send that out to Rory McIlroy. So, hey Rory, best of luck this season. Excited to see the start of 2020 this week at Torrey Pines. And just like that, you can interact with your favorite players. The fans can participate even more in the sports that they love and chat with their favorite players. I think that has specifically been an excellent part of social media 
really allowing people to reach those that otherwise would be unreachable and adds a little bit of extra depth to the sport and the athletes themselves. Well, that's the end of this video. Hopefully you enjoyed the content. If you did, don't forget to give this a quick like and don't forget to subscribe so that you see future videos coming very, very soon. I post each week with an emphasis on sports and how technology is really helping us evolve as athletes in today's world. So until next week, thanks for watching.